On today's show, FCA is trying to block sales of Mahindra's Roxer off-roader. Ford introduces new technology on the Focus that warns of wrong-way driving, and Tesla reveals its next version of Autopilot will use neural network chips. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. After a deal fell through last month to sell its electric battery operations for a billion dollars to GSR Capital, Nissan has found another buyer. It's selling it to the Chinese renewable energy firm, the Envision Group, but financial details weren't disclosed. The deal includes Nissan's battery manufacturing operations in Smyrna, Tennessee, Sunderland, England, along with its development and engineering operations in Japan. Envision will create a new entity with the acquisition, which Nissan has agreed to retain a 25% share of. In other EV news, Bloomberg reports that Daimler is in talks to build electric smart cars in China with Beijing Electric Vehicle. Daimler builds Mercedes-Benzes in the country with BEV's parent company, Beijing Automotive Group. It currently imports gas versions of Smart into China, but hasn't disclosed sales. But by building electric versions in the largest EV market in the world, Daimler hopes it can revitalize the Smart brand. Sales dropped 7% last year to just over 135,000 units globally. When Rick Haas, president and CEO of Mahindra Automotive North America, was asked about how FCA feels about its Roxer off-road vehicle on an auto line after hours back in April, his response was, we have legal agreements with FCA, we followed them. Well, it looks like FCA is not so sure. The Detroit News reports the automaker has filed a complaint with the U.S. International Trade Commission to block Mahindra from selling the Roxer in the U.S., FCA says the Roxer dilutes the Jeep brand and infringes on essential trademarks. Sub-70 years ago, Mahindra started building Jeeps in India while under contract with Willys. Its most recent contract with FCA is from 2009, and the company opened a new facility last year in Auburn Hills, Michigan, to build the Roxer. Ford of Europe is introducing a wrong-way alert on the all-new Focus. The technology is simple to understand, If a driver veers into the wrong side of the road, the car notifies the driver to check driving direction. The system uses a windshield-mounted camera that can check for no entry signs and a GPS to see if a driver is on the wrong side of the road. The technology will first be available in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Still to come, a look at autonomous technology developed by students and faculty at the University of Michigan Dearborn. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Tesla divulged some fascinating information on its earnings call last week. For the last two to three years, it's developing its own neural network chips in secret. They'll be used for the latest version of its autopilot system, V9. Stuart Bowers, VP of Engineering, said V9 will provide full on-ramp to off-ramp autonomy, including automatic lane changes. Pete Bannon, director of Silicon Engineering, said Tesla's chips can easily be retrofitted to all S, X, and Model 3s. He says that Tesla has a huge advantage in efficiency and performance, because it designed chips for neural networks from scratch, while others have modified existing chips. Elon Musk says the CPUs, or GPUs, that others use run their neural networks in an emulation mode, so they're not as effective. Quote, the current NVIDIA hardware can do 200 frames a second, Musk said. Quote, this is able to do over 2,000 frames a second. In the past, Musk claimed it was possible to develop autonomous cars without using LiDAR, only video cameras. Now we know why he's been so bullish with his prediction. On Friday, the University of Michigan Dearborn held its second annual Demo Day, where students and faculty demonstrated the latest mobility technology. 
One of the displays included a Polaris Gem EV that had been converted to drive by wire by students and faculty. The idea behind such a system is that it allows autonomous driving with the availability of human intervention. Another system, a paintball gun mounted to an autonomous robot, can scout ahead of troops with the ability to defend itself. But don't worry, in a real-world application, only a human can authorize the use of lethal force. Other installations included solid-state LiDAR systems, vehicle cybersecurity demonstrations, and the use of neural networks by autonomous vehicles to identify objects in their path. Many of the racing series were off this weekend, but NASCAR did race at Watkins Glen in New York, and Chase Elliott won his first Cup Series race. His Chevrolet crossed the finish line over seven and a half seconds ahead of Martin Truex Jr., and Antron Brown took the top spot in the top fuel category at the Northwest Nationals in Seattle. Coming up next, Toyota explains why it's developing a fuel cell-powered semi-truck when most of its competitors are working on battery-powered semis. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Last week, Toyota revealed the next generation of its fuel cell-powered semi-truck, which it's currently testing at a couple of shipping ports in California. And on last week's AutoLine After Hours, we were joined by Andrew Lund from Toyota, and he discussed why the company is going the hydrogen route when so many of its competitors are developing battery-powered semis. Battery and hydrogen both have a place in the market. Uh, and we at Toyota, we, we develop battery technology and we have battery electric vehicles being planned. Um, and actually quite a few will be rolled out in China and then throughout the world by Toyota over the next uh, few years. Uh, so we're not saying battery's not good. But battery has its limitations. It has its limitations in range and charging time and weight. So there are going to be some applications where it's better to have uh, onboard energy storage in the form of hydrogen versus onboard storage in the form of uh, electricity. So we, we look at this holistically, looking at the market from small vehicles to mid-sized vehicles to large vehicles, going from short range to long range. Um, you know, what is the vehicle doing at night? Is it running 24-7? If it's running 24-7, when do you have time to recharge? Or is it just a delivery truck where it's only going to deliver items during the day and it's going to sit with no one driving it all night long? Well, those type of uses will make battery or hydrogen fuel cell maybe more attractive. So, um, but for the drainage operation where you need to be able to keep the running going and there is a third shift. You know, not all the terminals operate the third shift, but there is a third shift, so you might need to be there early in the morning. Uh, having that flexibility of not having to charge uh, is something that really works well. And you can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, autoline.tv, or you can look for it on our YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.